Hi, Steve Surfoss here, continuing uh, with another video in the series of why God threw away the rules. Um, starting to get some feedback by this. The reason that I'm sharing this, um, I realize that most people that kind of you know do not agree with that, but this is something that I see in many, many, many places in the New Testament and even in the Old Testament as we're going to see today. It's something that's taught so clearly in Scripture and it seems so strange to me that it's not a, an accepted and well-known fact. I think there's uh, reasons going for that going way back in history. Uh, uh, well, recent history, not all the way back to New Testament times. But um, for that reason, I'm sharing it because it does go against. It's something that I think needs to be corrected, needs to be put in place. We need to get back more into what Scripture teaches about this. We still want to be a, a people ruled uh, by sometimes the Mosaic Law. Where are we at at this point? At this point, we have given two totally irrefutable, totally uh, 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 th uh, arguments that cannot be put to question of why we are not under the law of Moses. Let me just review for you. In Acts chapter 15, there was a church council, the apostles, the elders in Jerusalem, Paul and Barnabas went. Not only did the church council say, hey, we're a bunch of Christians over here that think that this should be this way, but they said it seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit and that was based on what the Holy Spirit had done with Peter in the house of Cornelius and gave the Holy Spirit without the need to follow the law of Moses. And so on and the result of that counsel, they said, we do not want to put burdens on you unnecessarily. And out of all the laws and regulations of Moses, they came up with four things only that they were asking the Gentile Christians to follow. And you can go back and look at the videos for more details on that. I won't rehash that. But they said the Holy Spirit did this. Peter at one point said, who are we to go against the Holy Spirit? So if you don't like what's in Acts 15, go against the Holy Spirit if you want to. But I mean, go back, read the chapter, pray about it. That's there. It's pretty, again, fatal in itself to the, to the idea of keeping the law. That argument by itself should be enough. But God, in, in his wisdom, and I guess knowing our stubbornness, Sometimes I, I, we kind of laugh in that series, and I mentioned that Peter, they kind of told him things three times. Apparently he thought we might be even more stubborn than Peter, so this is in there about six to nine times, depending on how you count it. The second argument that in and of itself should be enough is the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews said very clearly, and we went through that, and we started Hebrews 7, 8, 9, 10. The videos are there. You can go back and look at them. But basically what he said was there is a new priest a new priesthood, not just a new priest, a new priesthood. And if there's a new priesthood, that means there has to be a change of law. And, and he goes on, and there's other arguments in there that if we wanted to just count them, we could drag out and say, well, here's this argument or that argument or whatever. But uh, he said the law was, uh, didn't, didn't take away sins. It didn't work, period. Uh, so it's no longer here. But there's a new priesthood, so it's a new law. So again, this is the word of God. It's a clear teaching. That should be enough of itself. But that's two. We're going down to a list of six or nine. And all of this has to do really with the Mosaic Law. Let me just kind of outline where we're headed and what we're going to see. Um, when we get done with the Mosaic Law, then we're going to say, well, maybe we just need another set of rules. Maybe that set of rules was bad and we need a new set of rules. We're going to find out again as the name of the series is why God threw away the rules. No, those rules are not any longer valid. And God said, you know, it's not really through rules. And, we're going to, and the point here is to get beyond that and say, why did God throw out the rules? We're going to find out that God wants and can look directly at our heart and our minds, and that's the only real way that he wants to deal with us, and we should understand that he sees right through us, and we cannot hide behind a bunch of rules to try and follow him really in our hearts. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a, a, a good shot at where we're headed and what this whole series is about here. Again, all of this is going to go through Scripture. But um, let me go back a minute. We're going to go, and this was actually mentioned, and we're going to go into our third reason why uh, Christians are not subject to the law of Moses. And it's already been touched on in our readings and in the preaching that was done there by the author of Hebrews in the text of Hebrews because he grabbed a text in Jeremiah 31, which is very key. And I just want to go back and mention that because I think it should also stand on its own and I think it's a very important argument. First of all, just for purposes of review, we started out mentioning Matthew 5.17, a favorite verse of people uh, who like the law, and again, we've explained in a systematic way that takes in the truth of the whole of both parts 
why Matthew 5, 17 says he, that Jesus did not abolish the law, and why Ephesians 2 says he did, what happened in between, how he fulfilled and abolished at the same time the law. And so Matthew 5, 17, just to review something here important, says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Now, most people, when they look at this text, say, oh, well, you see, he came to fulfill the, the, the law. But if you notice, it also says, I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. What about the prophets? What did the prophets have to say? What did the prophets have to say that needed to be fulfilled? And uh, we will have to uh, look at this in uh, Jeremiah 31. And uh, we'll just, I see that I'm kind of short on time here to finish up. So, so this will just be kind of a, a guidance video here where we're at, where we've been, where we're going. And uh, let me come back with another video and we'll actually go back and look at Jeremiah 31. Uh, let me just take a few minutes then, to, or a few seconds, to explain what the importance of Jeremiah is. Is this whole thing about throwing out the Jewish law kind of a Christian patch? Is this kind of something where, well, let's move things around uh, from the New Testament forward. We're Christians. We don't like what Jews were doing, so let's throw this out. The text in Jeremiah is very important because we see this whole doing away with the law of Moses is something that was prophesied and is an part, integral part of the message of the Old Testament. So again, in the next video, we'll look at um, the actual text in Jeremiah 31, and we'll make that our third reason why the law of Moses does not apply to Christians. God bless you.